Hello, Craig. Costa Rica, coming, this coming is, to you this live. This is the magic of the internet, man. The magic of the internet, of Al Gore's internet machine. We are however many thousands of miles apart, and yet, and yet, here we are. Here we are. Like, if um, if if uh, if it was light out, you know, but Costa Rica, the it gets dark pretty early, actually, although it is pretty late. Or it's eleven thirty here right now, but like you could see a beautiful lake out off of our like I'm sitting on this veranda of this house we're staying at um, that uh, Amanda's mom booked, and it's a uh, uh, you know a, a beautiful place for sure. You know we're like in the middle of the rainforest; it's been raining like constantly, but also they have these uh, thermal pools that we've been in so like you're sitting in 105 110 whatever degrees but it's raining but you're like i'm fine because i'm warm like you're just in a giant hot tub basically and you know it's 80 degrees 75 degrees outside so it's not really cold you know so like it's an interesting place uh um a lot of really nice people uh interesting to see all of the restaurants are heavily influenced by tourists because you're like oh i'm gonna see some have some costa rican cuisine and like every restaurant's like steaks and burgers and chicken strips and like (laughs) you're like i did not come here for hamburgers i've had (laughs) i've had some really local cuisine i've had some really good hamburgers so far and some amazing there's this place that does like smoke stuff that we went to very good stuff not the true, like the, 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 like the Tico typical is like rice and beans, like fried plantain, stuff like that. Uh, and like a queso, like a, just a, like a soft white cheese, things like that. But like, I, I think like they're quite influenced, you know, tourism so heavy here. Like, you know, you get steaks and burgers. I mean, the steaks are really good here. I, I'll give them that. But like, it's kind of, kind of wild. But like, yeah, we're, we're close to the Arenal volcano. Um, we're, then we're going down to the to the coast uh, tomorrow, um, but yeah, we're, if we would, I could see Lake Arenal if if it wasn't dark. But it, it's a beautiful place, um, and so I would highly recommend anyone who's not been to Costa Rica. It's a great place. Uh, we stayed at a, a thermal resort for the last couple of days, and that was really cool. And, um, yeah, just hanging out in the pools and stuff. Uh, it was particularly cool last night because our children weren't there with us they were they stayed with the grandparents back at the house and so uh not having to care about what the two tiny humans are doing for like 24 hours is pretty great um but yeah uh yeah yeah but yeah so that's where i'm at costa rica um yeah and this is uh but even uh even despite that we are still recording uh episode 188 of podcast versus everyone yeah. i am craig powers with me as usual is jeff newser and uh jeff uh as far as the men's basketball team goes man i don't not yeah. not exactly the most ideal of weekends <laughs> like i think we can finally no. we can finally we can finally put the the final the final nail in that at yes. large coffin like that is at large yes. bid it, that is an yeah. impossibility at this point yeah. and and just yeah, we were getting sitting there to, after stanford yeah. and we're like maybe and it's like then they lost five of six and then that was the end of that yeah no. and even just now even like nit you'd have to basically win out 
to have a shot at that. So like that's yeah, you'd have now, to win out, and the NIT would have to want you. <laughs> yeah, and the NIT would have to want you. It's, it's kind of both of those things. It's not like yeah. a, you know, it's not like a football bowl game, right? Yeah. So that's where we're at. Uh, you know, the USC game is frustrating because it was a much closer game than the the score. Yes. What ended yes. up being, uh, you know, I was I was like getting on the plane in the last two minutes of the game, and it was a three point game when I was getting on the plane, and then. I got on the plane and, and I looked at my phone and it it was like eighty to seventy. I was like, "What the fuck happened?" Like, you know, like, yeah. Uh, but yeah. they were right there, you know. They were right there the whole game. Yeah. It was, and, and they they had a chance, and it just, you yeah. know, it it, it it it's great. Like both the games this weekend, the defense after we the start the strides the defense had taken recently. Um, the defense really, really like let them down in the last yeah. two weeks. To these last two games, which is a bummer. Yeah, yeah. That USC game was. Um, it, it's it's one thing to be like, okay, yes, I, I, I want to be critical of the defense. They gave up one point one nine points per possession, which is uh, about you know point one nine too much, right? Uh, but also, like, I watched the game just like you did and like just there was just some ridiculous shot making <laughs> like i just i mean the the one that obviously sticks out is is the one that really sealed the game which is you know we're, we're down by 3 there's a minute to go and drew peterson you know with with mo all over him uh you know drew Le- peterson looked like he was going to try and drive and he couldn't drive he couldn't get past mo and mo was kind of all over him and then Peterson just does a little, you know, nifty step back three pointer just over Mo's fingertips and drains it, and you know, now all of a sudden it's a six point game, right, with fifty yep. seconds to go. So, I, you know, there was a lot of that. Boogie Ellis hit like Boogie hit and, a similar and, one think, over Mo earlier. Yeah, and he hits a couple that were like, you know, six, seven, eight feet, past thirty the feet. Yeah, goal. you know, just, I mean, he just. Yeah. I mean, so he was one of six mean, from he, really he was one of that. six from two, and he still ended up with twenty three right. points and, five of and, nine and from a, a one twenty one <laughs> offensive rating. Like it's what like, an asshole. Well, yeah. I mean, the problem you know you look at the problem is like you know seven they forced seven turnovers, ten percent turnovers. You know they, you know the 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 rebounding is was good. Like their defensive rebounding was about yeah, as good as great. you can like eighty eight percent. You know they they allowed three offensive rebounds, and and it's just yeah when guys make shots, you know it, it's a bummer though you know Joshua Morgan goes out early, and so you you're kind of playing against uh uh, uh 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 what you're thinking is a is a a a, a down USC squad but you know this Uwuchuku 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 Iwuchukwu, I sorry, Iwuchukwu, uh, I think. Iwuchukwu, um, I think yeah, so. Vincent Iwuchukwu uh, comes in, probably gives Mo a little more trouble, or, or not necessarily Mo, but like he protects the rim better than Morgan would have. Yeah. Now he probably he might have played the same amount of minutes anyway, but. Definitely not the uh, excuse me uh, offensive player that that Morgan is, and it it was just right. It, you so you think you're okay, you know we got this, but then you know you got you just guys. You, you, Drew Peterson and Boogie Ellis are just those type of guys that hit those fucking shots, and we, you know, we this year one thing that we that WC really doesn't have, and you know. At times last year, they had it with like Michael Flowers, a guy that could mm-hmm. just get hot and hit ridiculous shots. Yep, yep. Uh, this just they just don't have a guy that does that because they they really don't have a guy that will take those shots. Like Mo had an incredible game. Yep, like thirty one on thirteen of seventeen twos. Uh, I mean, he shot four threes. Probably shouldn't have done that, but you know, like. Just a just a game <laughs> yeah. of his life, and it's. But so you're thinking like if if you said you were getting 31 for Mo, but what was anyone else doing? Like 
you have a lot of guys on the rest of the team, especially when TJ is not 100%. You have a lot of guys that are shot resistant. You don't have a lot of guys that are looking to get their own shot, looking to take difficult shots. You know, Justin Powell, he does not take difficult shots. You know, he, I mean, he, if he does, it's, it, in, it, it's like, he a, just doesn't take it's at least a runner. Like that's, he doesn't of, take enough that's of, kind of the issues. He doesn't take, you enough. know, cause he was, he was 11% percentage in uh, possession in this. Like that's so low for like a starting guard <laughs> to have. Yep. And then you have, you know, Andre, he, he is so selective, you know, he's a great passer. He, he was, especially in this game, you know, he, like he, he, he was distributing. But also sometimes you're like, dude, just pull, just pull the damn shot. Yes. Like, yes. like who is better than you at this? Who who are you gonna pass this yeah. better? And TJ, he was obviously struggling in this game in particular. You know, I and he's he, we know he's not 100. percent Jabe, he's he's just he's been t- tagged by teams, and they <laughs> they know how to stop him at this point. Like it's yeah. just yeah, like, they're like yeah, just. Just don't let him shoot open threes. And even when he gets them now, he's not hitting them. Like he's he's rushing, yeah. his footwork like his just his his footwork looks terrible. It, yeah, and then we haven't even talked about the fact that obviously DJ Rodman was out, Andrade Jong was out, uh, yes. and uh, Dylan Darling was out, all with illnesses. So they're playing with seven scholarship players. All seven of them played. Carlos Rosario, game of his life. Like, yeah. But he, but he also played he played 20 minutes and fouled out in 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> like, he, yeah. Like, it, it, so, like, it, 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 he's just not a guy that he's never, like, I think he's played, I don't know if that was his career high. I think he's played more than 20 before, but, like, probably not. I'm not, in a, I'm not sure. Not, not in a close, play intense play. game like this. No, um, certainly not that. Kamani is just, you know, he's struggling right now. And and then you got, you, but you have to play him in this game because he's yeah. obviously Dylan had passed him recently. They'd been playing Dylan a lot more and he gets sick. DJ gets sick. Um, you know, DJ is one guy that has been taking a few more shots recently. He's not yeah. there. Well, and, and, so, and I think that's so, where you really, I think that's where you really missed him, right? Like the defense matters. Obviously, the defense matters a lot, and and Kyle Smith noted on his coaches show that DJ was the primary defender on Drew Peterson last time, um, and and played him really well. Like, but I think when you look at like kind of the shots, like you know, you mentioned Kamani has struggled, Rosario um, had the game of his life, but also you know, twenty minutes took five That's shots, six points and four rebounds, two of them, right? Six points and four rebounds in twenty minutes. Uh, and then Jabe, of course, uh, you know, scores two points. So, you know, these, these three guys, Jabe and Carlos Rosario and Kamani, play 58 minutes between them, and they score 12 points, right? And not that DJ, obviously, is, is sort of a high-volume scorer, but, like, we've, we've, you know, established at this point that he is a legitimate get 12. offensive threat, <laughs> right? Yeah, he can get you yeah. 12, you know, in, you know, 30 minutes. You know, versus not even considering the fifty-eight minutes, right? Exactly. So, you know, and I think USC did a really great job. They did a lot of good things, but they did a really great job of funneling shots to people that couldn't really hurt them. Um, And that's where I think you know they they forced Jabe into contested shots, and he only ended up you know taking three three pointers um, in twenty-four minutes. And then, of course, they they were perfectly willing to let Rosario and Kamani you know, shoot as much as they wanted to. Right. And, and it worked and it worked. And that's where I think if you have DJ, you know, he's taken up at least those 20 minutes of Rosario, uh, you know, maybe even taken some of those minutes from Jabe and all of a sudden you're like, okay, you know, now you've got someone who's, who's a little bit more of a, uh, so, someone USC is probably not as uh, eager to let shoot. So yeah, they, they really and- missed DJ. The sickness was, was huge. And, you know, they, they kind of, you know, they ran out of gas at the end a little bit, I think. And, and you look at it and you're like, how is it a 20 point swing from in Pullman? Well, in Pullman, Drew Peterson was, you know, 
he had 16 points on 7 of 16. Boogie had 12 on 5 of 11. You know, like, those guys just weren't hitting ridiculous shots. They they actually had 1.09 in that game, though. Like, USC still scored a bunch on us the first time. But WSU was at 1.25. You had Jabe hit 4 of 6 from 3. You had Justin hit 4 of 7 from 3. DJ was 3 of 6. He had 16 points in that game. Like, just those things. Like, it's clear that we have a hard time defending USC. Like, if you look at the two-game sample, uh, but the difference was WSU just didn't score as much this time as they did last time. I mean, it's it's hard to defend a team that makes – that just makes shots. Like I mean, like Drew Peterson, Drew Peterson, and Boogie Ellis are two of like they may be the two best difficult shot makers in the conference. Like they're, I think that's, they, I think that's legit. Like Drew Peterson makes the most insane like shots that anyone outside of Dirk Nowitzki like does like has never like these one like it fadeaways and he's six foot nine and. Like it, and he's playing the three, and he's always got like a six seven guy guarding him, or a six six guy, and it's just yep. like, but or he even had a seven footer on him, and he still hits that one foot, and he hits, and he's so good at that. Like these, it's not like crazy that he hits the shots. It's not like crazy that Boogie hits these shots. Like they're they're shot makers. That's what they do, and, and like and and sometimes you just get on the wrong end of it, and it sucks yep. that it happens and in a game like this where you're like really hoping they could you know keep the faint hopes of something alive you know but but yeah you know it's just it's it's the same shit over and over again this season like guys are always missing and it has a ripple yep. effect like yep. jabe wasn't gonna start jabe wasn't gonna wait 24 minutes uh you know like and if 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 dj is not guarding drew peterson Andre is guarding Drew Peterson. That means Andre is not playing interior defense, which he's normally playing, which is he's become very good at. Yep. So like it, it, it just it's a ripple effect down the line, offensively and defensively, and just just knowing you only have seven scholarship guys going to a game, like that's rough. Like Mo is a six eleven center. Six eleven centers aren't yep. supposed to play thirty eight minutes. Like that's. That's not a thing. No, like, not. like six eleven centers play thirty minutes a game typically, and Mo's playing like starting point guard playmaker minutes. Like that's that's crazy. And and, and, yeah. and he just yeah. for him just to not to have it's just impossible. you know you you, it's, you don't, you don't you, yeah, and you don't have Dylan coming in for ten fifteen minutes to guard the point of attack. Yep. You know, give Boogie, make Boogie work work a little harder. Um, yep. You know, I know he's short, but he's he's just has a motor. He would have been a big know, Yeah, he would have. Yeah, been he would. Yeah, and he would have used you know used his fouls a bit, and, and maybe just bother him just enough that he doesn't feel confident shooting that thirty fucking footer and burying it. You know, like whatever. Yeah. You know, and and so like it all has ripple effects. It all it all matters. Like you can be like, you know, I saw this like tweet from like a a better guy and he's like the only one that matters of that three is is dj no those fucking 10 minutes that a drama would have played would have mattered in this game like yes. defensively they we would have know, mattered a lot we know we've looked at the fucking plus minus they are way better defensively when a drama is on the floor well and they hit like, 55 percent of their twos like usc yeah. hit 55 percent of their twos and a drama has as all, we've talked about yeah, they has become an elite rim, but yeah like yeah. Adrame has become an elite Shot rim protector. We had zero. And so, and, but those ten minutes, what if you you USC instead of going fifty five percent goes twenty percent? The, then WSU right. has a lead going down the stretch. Right. That Drew Peterson three yeah. is not a clincher. Maybe it's a tire. I don't know. You know, like it's yep. Like I mean, Trey White this, especially this, was 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 really good in that. I mean, he hit six of eight twos. Uh, Peterson obviously was five of seven on twos, but a lot of those were jumpers. Trey White, but was, like Trey White, was like, getting to the you get a, He's really you got He's he's not athleticism, like, but you got you get a drama in there protecting the rim with the same level of athleticism. Right. Yep. You know it's 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 you know, and we just we know Mo with he's just not really interested in that. Like right now, he's just not. 
a rim protector. Like, it's just not a thing. And you look at the starting lineup, if Mo's not protecting the rim, then no one's protecting the rim. Like, yeah. and, and and if Andre is guarding the six nine three, like, look, yeah. then it just what's left in the off. lineup? Yeah. yeah. Like, it so just it's just, it, so it's just the fucking luck of this team, like, all, all year. Like, you just, oh, just can't, you just, it not like, you're never going to have your guys. Like, and we already know, they already, uh, off the jump are missing two scholarship players and then so many of the games they've been missing one to three more like it's just so fucking frustrating the season is just beyond frustrating i can't even imagine the coaches and players how they feel and but like and and as a fan but it's just like what the fuck are we supposed to do like a college team cannot endure this much like attrition like constantly you know, just constant. It's certainly not attrition. WSU. And then you come back like against UCLA, and you get those guys just, back, but they're not really bad, yeah. right? Like, yeah, well, it's it's not DJ is not back. Yeah, it's not just college basketball. It's it's WSU in particular, right? Like, like okay, we're already down to, and you know, we keep saying this over and over, but we're already down to guys from the start of the season, and then you know, losing more guys. Lose, I mean, it's just. It's, you know, it's whatever. And like you said, I mean, it, you know. That's they, how you play, play games. UCLA. You're playing on the road against a team yeah. that you've already beaten and you have seven scholarship players. Yes. And then and, you got to go play UCLA. You do get one guy back. You get a drama back. But it's like. I he mean, plays one minute. You, you know. <laughs> well, first of all, you're playing. Uh, yeah. Plays. You know, he just plays like a minute. He's he's clearly not healthy. Right. And then, you know, you're, you're going to this next game with Powell and Gay having played 38 minutes, Andre having played 32, TJ played 32. Uh, I mean, you rode those guys real hard against UCLA and then or against USC. And then you put in the fact that we literally never win at UCLA. Not literally, but like two times, I think, right? Three times, something like that in the entire history of the series, I think. And so, yep. um, you know, and I was kind of joking on Twitter with, but also uh, UCLA is really Twitter, fucking good. Yes, that too. You know, I was on Twitter, a uh, guy named Equity Bruin, who, who's on Twitter. Yeah, um, yep. but he, yeah he's a good Knowing dude, well. and he's, he's kind of, yeah, he's fun to interact with. Um, and he was, like, legit nervous about the game, and I'm like, dude, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> like, I know that was, like, such a, like, I, like I feel bad saying stuff like that. But he I'm kept also saying, like, like I, he's I, like, WSU is going to like, be be, UCLA. WSU's I can't believe UCLA's UCLA is favored by 11, and I'm like, that's, UCLA should be favored by 25. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, we never, ever, ever win down there. Like, it's basically, like, close-ish losses under the Bennetts and then, like, blowout losses then, under everybody. And then we're, like, that's we're, missing, we're missing three scholarships. And we're missing like, all like, these dudes. Like, yeah. We're missing all these like, dudes. So, I mean, basically, we're missing yeah. a drama. Like, that was, that was, yes. Yeah. So we're missing DJ. We're missing a drama more right missing darling um, you know just kind of yeah you just kind of go all that you're just like you know and then all these guys had to play a ton of minutes in a super intense game you know two nights before like whatever man no shock at all they and they 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 hung for a while you know yeah. there was a pivotal like sequence in the second half where yeah they were down seven kind of with seemed the like the, early yeah, in the second yeah. half you know and then it i want to say apart. down yeah they Something were down like seven that. uh down seven, and they had a fast break, and it looked like an easy bucket. It didn't happen. Then UCLA just went on this yep. insane. Like after that, it was over. Yep. Like they yep. could have cut it to five. They didn't. Of course, if you look at the win probability yep. chart on Kempom, they never had a chance to begin with, or at any point. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's that's why I just don't read. I don't know. I don't know about you. I don't read anything into it. Like I just go, you know, we always lose at UCLA. 10 points, 25 points, 35 points. Honestly, just don't kind of don't give a shit. Like we never win there anyway. And as you said, UCLA is really, 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 really fucking good. And I know people get like, they get tricked into thinking teams actually aren't that good because they lost a couple of games. And it's like, no, no, UCLA is so much better than everybody else in the conference. And it's not even actually very close. And I don't know what it's going to be at the end of the year, but I would not be shocked if UCLA ends up winning the conference by, by a couple of games, 
Like I think they're a half game up on Arizona right now. Arizona I think has three losses. They've got two, but it's like, I, yeah, it's they are so good. They are and they are being you know really criminally underrated by our fans in terms of what happened. I think our fans looked at we almost beat them in Pullman. How are we going to lose to them in twenty four down there? Like I like I don't know. Like I think this is how people think. You see, like um, kind of play really like fucking good. kind of play like shit in that game. Like like honestly, yeah, like they didn't play great. They play like if you look at UCLA fans, they're like, "Oh man, like our our best guys are not playing well." And like maybe we did some of that, but also we hit some crazy shots. Like yeah, we, we yeah. went eight minutes without they just scoring. They didn't have a great game, and we had a good game. You know, they and, and you know we had, but it's yeah, we it would have been nice if they would have finished that one off. But you know, the season is just we have a a, a win over a top ten Ken Palm team on the road and then it's just like what the fuck man yeah. like um and but you know what uh wc's played the most difficult fact of schedule uh up to this point but and I, I think we've talked we've we've talked enough about the ucla game it doesn't fucking matter right like it doesn't who cares like yeah, it, yeah. It, pal, we don't need we don't need to talk. Pal, it, just, it is pal and powell hit a bunch of threes and bomba had a pretty nice game there was really nothing else outside of that UCLA is really good. WSU was down scholarship players. Um, if 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 you could find me a WSU team with seven and a half scholarship players that can go down and beat UC, a top five UCLA team, uh, yeah, uh, that that would be the yeah. first good luck. WSU team in history. Um, good luck. Uh, so, yeah, like WSU has. Uh, let me look at Kim Palm. Yes. Most difficult schedule, obviously Washington number two so far. Um, both have went five and nine against that. So we got Washington coming up this weekend and, and you know, that's obviously a big game. It always is, but Jeff, I, there's, there's like a, there's like one more reason why it might be a big game. I don't, I'm trying hmm. to think, I don't, hold me on. Let me scratch hmm. my, lower calf for Let's a see. second i have a bug bite yeah. down there mm. um lower calf uh, maybe even your yeah. achilles yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh that's right yeah yeah the there's return, this guy named noah williams the return <laughs> the return of noah williams the return of noah williams who had who i like we know what he can do um, on the top end. And I feel that in my Achilles literally right now. But we also know that last season and this season, he's been pretty shitty. Yeah. And and the funny thing is, uh, like, he, he left WCU, obviously. I don't think anyone tried to stop him. Um, nope. I don't think anyone wanted him to <laughs> nope. go to Utah. Kyle Smith made that. Kyle Smith made that pretty darn clear this week on his coach's show that it was a exactly. it was a extremely mutual decision. Extremely mutual. <laughs> yeah, which is the but, which is the coach's way of saying like uh, this guy was not welcome back, but I'm going to do the coach thing right now and like just. You know, just kind of say, "Oh yes, it was mutual." Yeah, yeah. You just don't not getting along with some guys, and uh, you know, I think he was frustrated last year. He 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 took a huge step forward his sophomore year. Definitely took a massive step down, especially shooting wise. His, you know, it was largely shooting his sophomore yep. year, and so he just wasn't the playmaker that he wanted to be because he i mean if he can't make shots then like you're it doesn't matter what you're doing like right. if, if you're shooting 33 percent on twos and 30 percent on threes like you're not useful and uh, now at u-dub he's upped uh his two pointers this year uh but they also have him in like they play him often in a playmaking kind of point guard role he's turning the ball over more um, it's a strange thing to me is he's getting less steals than he did. Uh, you'd think he might, 
I guess, you know, I think I, I would think that he would be a, a great guy in a two three zone of getting steals, but he yeah, just hasn't looked it up. It kinda that, depends so. on it kinda depends on where you play in that zone. If you're like the kind of the central true. guy, you know, if you're Matisse Thibel, right? Playing in that central well, position. Also Matisse Thibel is insanely good at that. Yes, um, also Matisse yeah. Thibel's in the NBA, right? So yeah. yeah. Really good player. But but that's kind of what I'm driving at is like if you're in that sort of central spot where you're cutting off passes and whatever, like, you know, you, you might get your hand on a few more balls. You might get some steals, I, and, yeah. you, you know, and part of it might be also, I mean, I don't know. I don't watch that much of you, Dub. Um, yeah, they're so fucking Dub, boring. Two, they're boring as shit. Like, I just like, I can't even imagine playing. Uh, we just, we we talk about this all the time. Like you dub like, there how many defenses could you dub play and be better than yes. eighty one on Kempom? And you're just playing and this they play boring as hell. Boring two three zone. Two three zone. And it's like or three two zone or whatever it is. And it's like with it's those matchup d- zone and it with just the guarantees dudes that they the game got, is going like, slow, like it's just it's brutal, and it's like you know maybe part of it is you they know, have, when we talk about Noah's steals, like he's an on-ball defender, like that was his strength with us. You know, maybe just the fact that the zone is what it is, like isn't you know maybe it's just like he's that's just not where he excels when it comes to stealing. You know, playing. Well, that's passing that's what that we thought that was kind of weird too. Like when he went there, it's like well he kind of made his name as an on-ball defender, and now he's going to go play in his zone. Um, you know, whatever, like. I guarantee the coaching staff and I guarantee and all of us are feeling like Noah's going to shoot 25 shots. Probably and, if, he's, if if he's in the game long enough to do it. Yeah. And, but you're like, and he's going to hit like he could very well go for 35 against WSU. <laughs> like, cause, cause, but, but it's just, we know an angry Noah is going to be launching. Like we we know see, his personality. See, I kind of go both ways on this. Okay, so so tell me what you think. Like, there's a part of me that yes is like, okay, Noah's going to be angry and focused, and he's going to go off. But then there's the other part of me that's like, Noah's going to be angry, and he's going to be playing against teammates who know how to get under his skin, and he's just going to shoot himself into oblivion. Well, that's what I mean. Like, like I know which he's direction shoot, do you lead? But both of those directions are Noah shooting. And so that's yes. what I think yes. is going to happen. So it comes down to like, is Noah shooting? Is Noah making tough shots? Is because I it's, he's definitely going to be shooting tough shots. Is he? Is he? Gonna, is you know in, exactly? You know the, the teammates are going to know what bothers him, all that stuff. Um, but like, is he making those shots? Like I, I think that's why I think like anyone, he's going to come in. He's already a pretty high shot, like a, a pretty high usage player for you, Dub. Uh, and I think it's going to be even more like he's at the level that he was with WSU last year. Um, if not more, uh, you know, roughly around the level that he was at WSU in terms of usage. It, but I could see him being more that like when Bonton was out that weekend and like usage, like 30 plus percent usage guy because he's playing WSU. But I wouldn't be surprised also if Hopkins pulls him, if he's taking a lot of dumb shots, because I'm not saying Hopkins is a great coach, but I'm sure that any coach would know that this is a potential, like either he's going to go off or he's going to torpedo us. And so we're, it's going to be fascinating to watch. I I hope I get to watch it. Uh, It's on Saturday. I think I I got my (laughs) VPN. Uh, because this is like and, fucking and appointment way, television. W- one other thing about Noah, he did not play against UCLA because of a coach's decision. Yeah. So that was a now he was on the he was on the bench. He was wearing a warm up suit, all that kind of stuff. Did not play against UCLA. Coach's decision. Did play against USC and played horrendously. He played 19 minutes. Uh. O of three on twos, uh, one assist, three turnovers, and four personal fouls in 19 minutes. That's even, that's an even, in case you're doing the math, that's even more fouls per minute than Carlos Rosario. So, yeah, I I don't know, man. I don't know which way it goes. I'm also curious to see uh, who and how we defend him. 
Um, you know, I know that TJ Bomba is like our best, like, uh, on ball defender, perimeter defender guy. And so there's a part of me that wants him on Noah, but I also don't know if maybe they've got, uh, needs TJ. to be. Yeah. Locked yeah, up they, on somebody doesn't... else. I don't know. There's a part of me that's like, get him on there first and just kind of like fluster Noah and get him off his game. And then maybe you can adjust from there, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the Noah thing, look, there's, <laughs> I'm sure Noah still has people on the team that consider Noah a friend, but Kyle Smith was like super clear on his coaches show that this was like, you know, that Noah kind of wasn't welcome back yeah. and that he, you know, he even went so far as to say like there were, you know, Noah had damaged relationships in the locker room and stuff like that. Like it was, I, you don't normally hear coaches that now he went out of his way to give Noah credit and be like, you know, Noah owned it when he transferred, like he came in and we had a meeting and he said, you know, I think I've, I've kind of screwed up. I think a fresh start is best for everybody. And Smith was like, yes, yes, we agree. <laughs> you know? And so there's all that, which kind of makes me think like, I don't know, there's gotta be guys on the team. I, I understand the roster turned over quite a bit, but there's gotta be guys on the team who really, really, really kind of want to stick it to him. I would think. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, so it could be the same thing, uh, either way, you know, our guys could be amped up to, you know, so that could work in our favor. It's interesting. You know, it, it, you know, UW isn't fully whole, uh, either in terms of injuries, they, they lost Frank Kepnong or, you know, a long time ago, 20, 20 plus games ago. Um, what they have let, you know, they've been playing this Braxton Mia, very big athletic dude. Um, I'll be curious to see though him defending Mo. Um, yeah, he he, but I I mean he doesn't really have to though I guess because they're playing his own. Like he's he's a he's a decent rim protector, but like he's six percent block rate on the back end. Like Kepnog was more of what they what you want as that back end of that zone. Um. Mia has he's he's definitely I think like I just from watching him I, I think he could be pretty good. Um but well, you know, it's a he's lot a of keeping him off the offensive glass. Like that's the big thing. Yeah. You yeah, keep him off the offensive glass because he'll get he'll get offensive rebounds and then he gets yeah. dunks. Like that's yeah. kind it's of a, that's what he's 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 a big fucker and he dunks. Like that's like it's and that's he's a transfer from Fresno, you know, he's he's just yeah, I mean, I think probably a good pickup for them, especially since Kevnon got hurt. Yeah. But like, I mean, he's a really nice uh, player. Like, that's we're not like talking him but, down. He's but a good, he, he's inter- a nice like, player. He is. He's not the rim protector on the back end of the zone that the Syracuse zone typically wants. Yes, and that's like he's okay. That, yeah, he's okay. And I'm not saying like their defense has been solid. Like, but it's not like it's again. It's like why are you playing this for it? You could. With this set of players, man, like yep. you, you're you're starting a six one point guard and you're playing a fucking zone. Like what the f- like? Come on, like a six yep. one hundred and fifty pound point guard, uh, uh, Kenyon Keon Mayfield, Menafield, who has uh, basically he wasn't he was a bench player early, just started you know, uh, well he started a couple early games, went to the bench. Came back. He's not a. Uh, he's now starting again. Um, he's been their starter for a while now. Uh, but you know, I think like with our big guards, you know, I hate to say, but well, he is definitely too, too. the wild card. Like he's yeah. a bucket getter. And yeah, he's he's like the any guy. Freshman, that's... he's up and down, but he, you know, he's got his last three games: twenty-one points, zero points, twenty-one points, <laughs> ten points. The fourth game back. So, but what I what, what like, I what I do like. What I do like is that you know he's six one, he's small. He, he, you know, yes, the guards were rolling out on him. You know, maybe TJ, maybe Justin at six six, TJ at six five. Um, you know, it, it, he's gonna face some length, and he's quick, and that's a problem. And that's why I hope a drama play a drama plays, yeah. um, and hope we get ten minutes or so out of him, and uh, and I hope. DJ plays and then Andre can, you know, move down to play in a force, you know, more of a force position, 
more of a, a lower defensive position. You know, because, you know, I think that WSU should win this game, but. Yes. You know, like, shit's annoying when the other team's playing a zone and we play a really slow pace. Like, this shit's going to be ugly. Like, because uh, UW does play kind of fast offensively, but we're going to do all we can to limit that. And it's also a bad offense. Yeah, I mean, a very <laughs> like, fast, like bad they can offense. Play, they can play fast, but they're bad. Yeah, this game you know? is going. This game be. This game's gonna be ugly. But the thing is, like, it's we're we're playing now. Let me before I make this statement. Let me check a stat real quick. Uh, but we're playing. Okay. We're playing a zone team, and we are. Yes. So they're not. So I will say. Like, this is why Ken Palm took out his... Remember, he used to have that thing where it would tell... Like, he would... It, it yeah, was the, a guess on what the defense was. Defensive fingerprint. fingerprint. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he took it out because, like, almost no teams play zone anymore. But uh, but yeah. but they're, they, they're in the middle of the road in allowing threes. Which, for WSU, that's good. Because, like, the, the red flag for WSU is if a team focuses on denying threes. Yes. And, but the thing is, like, um, teams that, and, and, and Bryce has said this, and we, we've said this before, teams that play to the scout that know they have to force WSU off the line usually have more success against WSU. But UW would have to kind of change their defensive philosophy to do that. And we have seen that UW do that. We've seen them switch to a man to man, like, randomly in, in late game situations against WSU. So it'll be interesting, but I, I think like WSU, this will be a game where they can get three pointers up and that's a big deal because they have the shooters, especially if DJ is back, which uh, hopefully this, whatever illness is not, you know, over a week. I don't, I don't know if he mentioned him in the coaches show because I didn't listen to it. Um, but uh, it, yeah, it, if, if DJ is back, if they have their full complement of shooters, they should be able to get some shots up. Not have to worry too much about, you know, the shot blocking or in the lane or whatever. Um, I think Mo is he did it last year, and I think I could see him again being an excellent uh, high post man in this. Yeah. Um, you know, having you know running high posts with back cutters, and he's, he's such a good passer. And I think Kamani. Yeah. He could also fill that role really well. And yep. so I think we have guys that could that could punish his own. And I, I hope they do that. You know, because we got shooters, we got a great we got a great point forward type guy, point center type guy. Um so I'm hoping, you know, I I would expect them to do well offensively against U dub. And it comes down to in and one more thing, Jeff, what are zone defenses most terrible at above anything? <laughs> Defensive rebounding. And what is like one of the most important things, parts of WSU's offense? Yeah, offensive rebounding. <laughs> so this is literally yeah. like shoot the fucking threes and then let Mo and whoever else go yeah, get more. Just let like, Mo go just eat. Like, yeah, like... I I think the offense is going to be fine in this game, and I think I that, do too. And so, and I think that they can shut him down defensively as long as Mr. Williams doesn't yeah. decide some to make kind every of crazy shot. Noah or Menafield. Menafield's honestly the guy who worries me. I do. Like, I also I yeah. That... Menafield, honestly, this is why I hope Dylan is back. Like I because uh, yeah. I I well, think Smith like Smith made Dylan... it sound like everybody was going to be back. Yeah. So. Cause... I could that see everything if, was going to be back to normal. If if we're getting roasted off the dribble by Menafield, they'll put Dylan in, and yep. Menafield, Merrifield, Merrifield, Menafield, 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 Menafield. Uh, it he uh he doesn't have any sort of height advantage over Dylan, so like it's not like it's not like that issue here that we right. were it was killing us last year. Dylan's a great on ball defender, so I, hopefully they can use him. Uh, to slow him down, and if they do, like there's not a lot of other guys that create their shots, not a lot of other guys that are making shots for them. You know, Keon Brooks has been good, 
Um, but and he'll he'll shoot a lot. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I also just, think it's worth. I was gonna say I think it's worth noting, like the defense until the last you know, few games had been really, really good for a while, and the badness just happens to correspond with playing some really good teams. You and, know, and Washington and w- is definitely and not Washi- a really Washington, good team. Washington's weaknesses, which are many on offense, uh, yes, they. They they match well with WSU's strengths. And sorry about my slowness. It's twelve. Uh, it's past midnight here, um, <laughs> and I've been drinking all day. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. So it, the, you know, UW turns the ball over a lot. Uh, they're they're they don't, which is so weird. Like UW classically offensive rebounding team. They don't. Offensive rebound that well, so WSU could clean the glass. Uh, you know, they could get some turnovers, and when they do, when they get those two things, they usually really good because they, yeah, yeah. So I, I, you know, I'm and Washington likes good about to shoot this. threes too, and we don't allow a lot of threes. Yeah, so like that's, they, that's, that's the other piece. Yeah. So I'm feeling feeling okay about this. So sorry when. It yeah. just, yeah, now apart. you've talked me into it. Like this is like Cougs by fifty right here. I know. Like if you look at the matchup, it's like fuck, man. You better not fucking lose this game. Um, I will say UW's like three point percentage defense is insanely good, which is kind of weird. Um, but also I, I could see like, yeah, miss a bunch of threes, then clean the glass and like, just yep. like. Yep, miss a bunch of way. threes and let dudes get boards. Like I don't care, just get a shot up. Like that's yep. uh, just get a shot up, get the board. We got great. Uh, we're a great offensive rebounding team. We got a lot of great offensive rebounders, especially Mo. Get on Drame in there. He'll clean the glass. You know, it, it'll be it'll be it'll be good. Like just just get shots up. Don't turn the ball over, and don't let Noah go for forty. Or even if he does, yep. he probably could still win. I don't. I don't know. Like it's just. It, it, there's the Noah wildcard factor, which I'm sure the coaches are just convinced is going to ruin their day. But I like it's, so. yeah. But but it's still, like, it's like, you know, the all things all things considered, WC should win this game probably by ten points or whatever. Probably but, by double digits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I hope they do because fuck you, Dub, and and yeah, Noah. I don't want you to get your uh, get your revenge. I'm sorry. I, whatever revenge you feel like you need to take. Uh, but this does start a, you know, hopefully this starts a, a string of winnable games that they do convert into wins. Uh, because yep. it'd be nice to win some games because this has been a real rough yes, season. It would. Yes, it would. All right. Well, let's... Uh, Let's take a break. Let's talk about the women's team who had to play Stanford this weekend, and we'll talk about that. Uh, They also played Cal. Yeah. Uh, But we'll be right back. And we're back. We're back, but Jeff, uh, before we talk about Charlize and crew, I want to hear what you are drinking on this fine uh, Wednesday night slash Thursday morning for me. Yeah, uh, I am drinking the same things, the same uninteresting things I was drinking last week. Uh, so I still got that. I still got some Bodie in the fridge, and I have now <laughs> moved on to the Rogers Pilsner. Uh, so that's uh. That's what I'm drinking. What are you so, drinking in Costa Rica? Tell me, tell me about this Rogers Pilsner. What is this? <laughs> is this like a is this a rare beer? You know, we yes. got listeners outside of Washington State. They may be yeah, you can't, they may be you confused. Have, like, what does that hunt. even mean? What does that even mean, <laughs> Rogers Pilsner? You didn't even say what brewery it was, Jeff. I, I know Georgetown, Georgetown Brewing. Just like last week, if you listened to the show last week. Yeah, I've moved on to the Rogers Pilsner. We are uh, 
And what we do you enjoy what do you, ourselves now? What do you think of that Rogers Pilsner? Yeah, it's delicious. It's great. I love it. Way to go, Roger. It's a good, it's good, good job good on your job. Pilsner. I don't even know who Roger is, but good job, buddy. Well done. Neither do I. How about but you, man? His Pilsner is good. I've had it lots of times. Uh, I am drinking I got Costa couple, Rica. I'm, I got, I'm double fisting right now. I had, I had to have a couple Costa Rican beverages. I definitely drank. I, I drank some. I drank some uh, Costa Rica craft beer earlier today, but that was like at the resort and it was at a restaurant we were at for dinner. Um, those were good. There were some good ones. There were some not so good ones. Overall, though, they get, they have some they have craft beer in Costa Rica, and I've tried it, and it is all right. Uh, but right now, <laughs> I have in one I have one one hand I have Imperial Silver. Imperial is like the like the Budweiser of Costa Rica. <laughs> like it's like the mm. big brewery. And silver yummy, is like yummy. they're they're intentionally less flavored beer. So it's like a lighter flavor of the regular Imperial. And let me tell you, it delivers on that promise. Because when it is hot, you just you don't want to taste your beer. You just want it to taste like cold. And which is also hard sometimes in Costa Rica. So this beer cold Hell yeah. Um, right now, it's been sitting out for a bit. I've been drinking on it. It tastes like a shitty lager. Yeah. I also have in my other hand, not a beer, but uh, uh, a local uh, Costa Rican uh, hard alcohol, sugar cane alcohol, not rum, uh, called Guaro. And I, I have been drinking a... Uh, a mix of like 50 50 with some Coke and some Guaro. It's very sweet, but right now I'm going to take a live pull off of the bottle of Guaro and then tell you how that tastes. Uh, Woo. Oh, ah, it's not as sweet. I mean, it is definitely sweet, but, um, yeah. That's something I recommend just to have it by itself. I think it's a good mix, a good mixer, the Guaro. Uh, yeah, so uh, Guaro, uh, sugarcane alcohol, and Imperial Silver. Um, I've also today, I believe I started my day alcohol-wise. We, we kind of, we had to kill some alcohol that we had in our hotel room that we stayed at for the last two nights, so... I had I had like a, a local IPA that was not very good, um, and I will say for the first time I opened a bottle of beer with my wedding ring, which uh, one of my uncles taught me way back in the day. So I was very <laughs> happy, very happy to put that skill into effect. Like because we were like it was weird because they had in the mini bar they had bottles that required a bottle opener, but they didn't like. But we had bought other you know beer to bring in and but they didn't have a bottle opener in the room and i was like so because but when i saw the mini bar when i went to get beer i bought the bottles because i assumed they would have a bottle opener since they have bottles that require that but they did not um so we were sitting there we had like two beers left we're about to go down to the pools check out of our room and go down to the pools uh i was like well let's let's just kill these beers off no reason to like take them and let them get warm or whatever and maybe break in the bag or whatever. And so I'm just like, well, I remember back in the day one of my uncles taught me. He showed me with his wedding ring. He could pop balls off. And so I put my wedding ring on my right index finger, my strong hand, and I popped the caps off. It does work. It worked very well. Um, and Good so job. we drank, drank, I drank the, we drank a couple IPAs. They were fine. And, and then, you know, this went on through the day uh, when we went down to the pool, uh, we had, you know, we had some leftover tequila we had to burn through, a couple other, you know, whatever, and then went down the pool, pina colada, uh, you know, Cuba Libre, which is rum and coke. It's just rum and coke with lime, like it's, but it's more fun to say Cuba Libre, you know, you know, things like that, uh, a margarita, all those fun things, just drinking constantly all day long, uh, and lots of good stuff, lots of some not great stuff but some good stuff but you know it's it's i'm on vacation and and i'm and i'm podcasting and you guys are having a good time listening to it i'm sure but anyway so that's the drinking update for me uh let's talk about 
the women's basketball team, which I swear to God, there is no team that gets up more to play WSU in any sport <laughs> more than Stanford gets up to play WSU women's basketball because Stanford <laughs> has so never true. has never lost to WSU women's basketball. And I think at this point, every player would take it like personally to lose to WSU, to be the first to lose to WSU. And they are so, like, shame is a powerful motivator. And they are so intent on avoiding that shame that they just will not. Because Stanford beat the living shit out of WSU, especially in the second half, <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, 71 to 38. And then went and fucking lost to UW, which is not a very good team. Like, like UW is not a great team. They're like around a hundred, I think, and now nah, maybe they're more now. Not a team you would expect to beat a top five team, like any time. But but like but they just absolutely obliterate. U- well, WSU. they're not better than us. Like, they're definitely like not. We are a better team. <laughs> you know, definitely not like forty points better. It like it's just like I swear Stanford is just like. We will not lose these. Like they take, like like it's like their national championship when they play, and they play in literal national championships. It's like their national championship when they play WSU, and they're like, "No, you will not beat us." And yeah, yeah, they couldn't like WSU again. You know, Tara Vanderveer doesn't let them forget it. Like you know, you know yeah, that like entire we're week 70, of practice, she's like, we are seventy. She's like, you know, we've Kansas never State. lost to them. She's you know, like, I've never lost, lost this right? team. This program has never lost this team. You better not fucking lose this team. Yeah, like you know that. But is. yeah, and it, goddamn man, like the way how well this team has been playing to lose like that to like, there's not yeah, that big of a, a bummer. There's not that big of a distance between these two teams, you know. Like, uh, but it's just like they just, they just, they just, and. And really, it was you know that they st- you know they started uh, you know WSU hits hits a three to go up three nothing and then can't score again. Uh, Stanford always had you know I, I think Charlize has if you look at all of her worst games like they're against Stanford generally, um, yep. so they focus really well and, and they have the athletes to uh, to focus on bothering her. And, you know, so she had, you know, eight points, which is not, I mean, she only took 13 shots, which is not a lot for Char- Charlize. And, you know, yep. WC's 14 of 56, or three of 20 from three. You know, it's just, it just they couldn't do what they wanted to do. And that sucked. But, in fairness, like, you, I mean, you kind of, write those Stanford games off as lost. Now you hate when they look like this because that probably hurts a bit like, in terms of yes. committee eyes. Uh, but to come back and take care of business, it's Cal is a big deal. You know, to take care of his business, um, take down Cal, get back to 500 in conference play, still four of those losses or when Charlie's was her, or not her, but gone. Like, so, you know, you, you still have that that had to hang, you know, so that to hang your hat on. Um, but yeah, you know, coming back, being Cal, it just, you're getting over that, that Stanford, you don't play Stanford again, the rest of the season. You only get, you only had to play them once this year. Uh, they're just, there's this like puzzle that WCU cannot solve. You know, they, they beat Arizona on the road. They beat Oregon on the road. They've beaten UCLA in, the, in recent years. And like, you know, they, 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 contended with UCLA with without Charlize but then you're like how how are we we're not 33 points worse than Stanford but it's just it's just Stanford something's weird about it but you know they they go on the road this weekend uh Colorado and Utah you know they they sh- you know again with Charlize they probably should have beaten Utah and Colorado at home uh, both you know both teams that they easily could have beaten uh, at home. Um, so you know, and both 
these both these games are are huge, huge, huge. If if you split this weekend, huge for NCAA tournament possibilities. Utah is yep. a seven seventh in net. Colorado is twenty one. So getting a win out of either of these games would be huge. And they, without Charlize, again, contended with these teams, should have beaten probably both of them at home. So does w, can this WCU beat these teams? Yes. Uh, and if they do, you know, I think it's one of those weekends where you could be helped a lot more than you could be hurt. Like if they lose both these games, but they come back and they uh, they beat the Oregon's at home and and maybe uh, beat USC to finish out the season, they're probably good, I think. But uh, if they get a win, one of these on the road, you got to think like their resume is pretty pretty solid as long as they take care of business yeah. the rest of the way. Like it, yeah, like just think so. and and. What's in their favor is this team has been so fucking good on the road. Like, so good. Yes. Like, what are they, 8-1? and one? They beat, Nor- like I said, they beat Oregon. They beat Arizona. Like, so, I wouldn't be surprised if they got one or both of these. Like, they're, that, they're good enough. Like, you got to wipe that Stanford game out of your mind. But, like, I, this team that we talked about, like, they're, they're different. Like, they're different. They got players beyond Charlize. And, and I... And if they can get one or two of these this weekend, that would just – you would feel very, very good about their NCAA tournament possibilities. Yeah. I, you know, the game against Stanford was terrible, <laughs> you know, obviously. Like, just in terms of uh, just the margin and non-competitiveness again. But they did come back against Cal, and it wasn't – you know, I mean, they just – they. You just not that it was a surprise, right? Like this team is mentally tough and they've they've been um, you know, super resilient, but it's always good to see that mental toughness and yeah. resilience, right? Like yep. so they come back and they um you know, they play well and they win the game, you know, fairly easily. And it's just like, yeah, like not that I thought that getting, you know, blown out by Stanford would like derail their season, but it's also always nice to see that it didn't, right? Like when you see you know, Charlie's come sitting... back with twenty five yeah. points, five assists, yeah. five points. Right. You know, like boards. we could be sitting here right now if we played Stanford on Sunday going, uh, you know, is, does this linger? Is it gonna be a problem? No, we already know it's not. We already know it's not because they've already played a game and they won that game. And you know, and so Feel pretty good about that, and uh, you know, I I tend to think, you know, I, I know there's still a fair amount of season left to play, you know, really about a month, but you know, I tend to think that this team is already, you know, barring something uh, stupid, you know, that they've already done enough to get in the tournament, um, you know, as long as they just kind of do what they should do over this last month or so, um, that they should be in, but. Uh, you know, again, you just, you know, like you kind of said, you know, you got to make sure that, you know, you beat the teams that you kind of should beat or maybe, maybe can beat, um, in order to, to secure, to secure that spot and don't, don't give the, you know, the committee a reason to not, you know, yeah, I guess so. You know, you got to think like the, the Arizona and Oregon road wins are kind of up there with, think. uh, the home yep. wins they had in previous seasons. Yep. Uh, yep. To you know, to kind of you know, because Arizona's twenty six and that Oregon's nineteen. You know, in previous seasons they had like a top ten home win, but like you know, a, a, a top twenty road win is generally more difficult than a you know a, a home win over a top ten team. Uh, so, but again, they could they could add one more. They they could add one or two yeah. more to the resume this weekend, and I yeah. think they're fully capable. And I'm sure. I'm sure this team is really excited to play these teams with Charlie's with uh, yes. full and, and with, and with, uh, with Tahina, with austere Tahina. Like, so like yeah. t- to have their full uh, squad to play them, you know, when they were close the first time uh, with, with players out, uh, it, it'll be interesting. Obviously it's a, you know, yeah. just as it is in, in, in men's hoops, it's a tough road trip always. 
because uh, you know the teams are so spread out, the elevations are high. But WSU has gotten wins on this road trip before. Uh, the women's team has, and you know the women's team has actually won in Boulder before. Uh, so I, I could see him doing it again. So uh, that that would be huge. Just to get one win this weekend would be huge. Two, I think you're you're there, and you're 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 more thinking about like where the seating is going to be, like versus. Yeah. If you're on any sort of bubble, you know, if you get two yep. wins this week. Yep. Yep. And if you could beat Utah, I think, like you said, you're just sort of like, yeah, okay. I'm not sure it really matters what you do the rest of the season. It is a tough finish to the season, right? Like uh, part of that is the Pac-12 is just so damn good, yeah. you know, right? Because you, so you go at Colorado, at Utah, then you got Oregon and Oregon State at home and, you know, yeah, so a bit, so tough games. So you have and then you, you, you have at so, UCLA at USC. So yeah, in terms of net, so you have I said already Colorado twenty one, Utah seven, uh, and then Oregon nineteen, Oregon State uh, is fifty six, and then you have UCLA which is twenty seven, USC, which I cannot find. Maybe they're pretty. <laughs> so, mm, they surged quite a bit after beating us uh, up in Pullman. Yeah. So they're not listed as maybe they're not listed as USC. Over Southern try, California. I, 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 Search for I, Southern I, California. Okay. Yeah, there we go. They're twenty eight. So, so yeah, like you, you, that that road trip to LA, you got uh, two, you know, top thirty teams 27 28 so that's you know they every every game left is tough for them like it's the the worst team in terms of that is oregon state at 56 everyone else is 7 19 uh 21 or, or i'm sorry 21 7 19 uh 27 and 28 like that's which the the thing there is like there's a lot of opportunities for huge wins but also if you finish the season with like seven straight losses, that ain't good either. <laughs> like, so it's like, right. I, this team's good enough to get, you know, to finish this season, you know, to finish that stretch. They're good enough to finish that stretch. But how many games is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. They're good enough to finish that stretch three and three or four and two. And if they do either of those things, three and three, four and two, they're easily in the tournament. Even if they go two yep. and four, I think they're in the tournament. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. I think this team is special. I wouldn't be surprised if they at least get one of these this weekend, and it'll be it'll yep. be fun to follow. So. Especially with Charlie's rounding, you know, back into form. That's that's yep. the big thing. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome, dude. Um, well, it is uh, twelve thirty in Costa Rica. Uh, I think I'm fine. You know, we we're a little shorter. But you know, there's just we're just talking about the basketball teams these days. Uh, I think I'm fine with like cutting this down. Uh, if you want, if you listen to this and you liked it, even if you don't like it, subscribe, subscribe on whatever your service is. Now, if you do like it, rate it five stars on whatever service you are. Also, gonna point out uh, that Jeff over here has started a Substack. And Jeff, Woo. how can how can one go about subscribing to that <laughs> Substack, which you have already posted yeah. multiple couple times, uh, multiple classic Jeff Newser articles on? Yeah, like where, like, uh, yeah, where can we find so these? So as as we alluded to last week, we do not know what the future holds with us at SB Nation uh, because they are whatever they are pulling their support for us at the end of the month. Uh, we don't know exactly what that means. Yes, the podcast. Um, we suspect that it merely means they will no longer pay us <laughs> for producing a podcast. Um, just sort of like that's the big thing. So to kind of try and get platform out platform or the yes, or like, yeah. you know, so the, we, the name we don't even know if you know, like yes. the name or anything. We do not know what all of that means. Um, I am fairly confident that. You know, if you're subscribed on iTunes or Spotify or wherever, that your subscription will continue to work. Um, but the very best thing you could do 
to keep up with what we're doing is go to podcast vs everyone dot substack dot com. Uh, sign up for the newsletter. A lot of people have. We've already we've got about I think 170 or so subscribers. Uh, I've posted a couple of things. We will start uh, posting the podcast there as well. Um, the podcasts that we post to the Substack will have no ads, at least for the foreseeable future. So, if that is a uh, if that is a thing that is um, attractive to you, then that would be a good reason to subscribe to the Substack. Uh, you know, basically it's uh Substack is what I like about Substack is it's kind of like two things. One is, uh, you get the newsletter thing. So you get like any posts we do get delivered to your email inbox. If you like to read things that way, that's great. Uh, but the other thing is it, it has actually a functional website and an actually really useful app. Um, I subscribe to a number of Substack newsletters and I usually, I actually have turned off the function to have it delivered to my inbox because I like to go to the app and actually read stuff right in there. So, um, so it is a pretty good deal. You know, that's, that's kind of our next step here in our evolution. Uh, most of what you've, you know, seen me write at Coog center over the years, uh, will now live, uh, at that location. So subscribe and all of that goes straight to you. And, um, you know, yeah, you can, you can enjoy the, enjoy the good stuff and, keep up with the podcast even after SB nation decides they are actually done with us. Yes. And, and we just, we have no control over that. Like it's just, it's just nope. happening. Uh, this is, and yep. honestly, this has been shit that's been in the works for a long time. If you've been following it, uh, yep. a very, a very, a very lack of, uh, attention being paid to the sports part of Fox, um, or, a just maybe uh you could even say a a, a level of disdain for the part <laughs> of the part you might the, say the very true. the very part that started vox in the first place yes. uh sb nation is the foundation for vox but now it's being gutted and has employed some of the most talented sports writers that we know in this generation and all of them have been fired by SP Nation. So cool. Uh, yeah, they're pulling the plug. We don't give a fuck anymore. Uh, but yeah, it's okay. Uh, you know, we hope they keep Coog Center up as, you know, whatever. But even that, we don't even know it either. And that's kind of also why, you know, just check out the Substack. Uh, but also keep following Coog Center. We have some great writers there who are doing some awesome stuff. Um, and where, whatever happens, we'll make sure that they have a place to keep writing in the future. Yep. Uh, so, uh, cause we, uh, actually genuinely love all those people. Like they are all our good friends. So, uh, That's but sad. yeah, so, uh, again, whatever, man, this, this shit's annoying. Uh, I, it's, it sucks when people have to ruin a good thing, but it's so much out of our, out of our control. Uh, and in the, in the minds of people who think they're smarter than, than other people are. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to stop now. Uh, but yeah, you, <laughs> I don't know, man, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at the Craig powers. You can follow Jeff at pod versus everyone again, subscribe to the sub stack. I think it will be a good way to, get your kook stuff um especially if you like jeff's writing and i might write there too i don't know i I'll, let me ask emma she might get mad at me if i don't write for kook center if i'm gonna we write something get, yeah we know. definitely gotta get you right in there yeah i should probably write i haven't written in a while <laughs> that busy, is also man. true i mean i have written just not for kook center uh yeah i gotta, I gotta get job. a I gotta get a job that doesn't require writing and then i'll write more for my hobby my hobby fun times no doubt yeah no doubt but yeah i i don't know but this is this this is what i'm longer than i thought anyway so uh thank you all for <laughs> listening to my uh unsober costa rican broadcast uh thank you jeff for joining me on this journey uh um, hell yeah i still can't see the lake because it's still dark but i know when i wake up in the morning it will be there and then we're going to get in a fucking van and drive for four hours to the beach, which Woo. I, which will be great. 
but not looking forward to, to the four hour drive. Uh, but yes. But anyways, I don't know. Like, beat you, Dub, and yes. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want Noah to win on no. on on uh, in Pullman. Like that would just oops. no. We don't. So come on, men's basketball, win your basketball game on Saturday. That's all That's I want. All I could ask for. All right, Jeff. With that, I say go fucking coots. Go fucking coots, great. Right? Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Get vaccinated. Still. Still. You can still do it.